What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here, honey, to talk about P Valley Season 2, Episode 2. Um, I'll say right off the bat, I love the spirituality aspect that they are showcasing on this show. I love that Diamond is a healer. I love I love that he's a healer and at the same time he'll break your goddamn neck. That's what I when I tell you I love that that a character like that, like I love that. I love that because it's like he's embodying both. He can heal you and he can he can hurt you real bad. <laughs> hurt you real bad. I love that. I love um I love the the um the scream mask. I love the like scary movie type of situation. It felt like it was like a little bit of a horror movie. So I feel like they're kind of getting into like ghosts and spirits and stuff like that because the episode is really really dark. Like shot dark, right? I'm not saying that it's dark energy, but it's shot like very low lights, a lot of blue lights, a lot of pink lights, purple lights, very low. Um, I love it. So this is episode two. We start off with the audition. So we meet Whisper and we meet Roulette. Whisper is a Whisper is a um I don't know if she's a witch, but she's some type of um some type of practitioner. She's some type of practitioner. She's has a pendulum. So I love that they're incorporating all these because it is the South. And, you know, we're not going to act like that our black people um, are, are, you know, not in touch with their spirituality in that way. Voodoo, hoodoo, and all that other stuff down South. I'm seeing this When I tell you that man that was parked in that car, he he sat there for two, two for two reviews. He looked like Lil Boosie. I was so afraid. You know, I don't like to look at black men because they think it's an invitation to have a conversation. So I did not look over there one time. But he sat there for two reviews. But when he first pulled up, when I looked up, I said, oh, my God, look at Lil Boosie. So we meet Roulette, Whisper and Roulette, and then we meet Big Bone. Uh, ben, when, she, when uh, Mercedes said, I don't want that fat booty bitch on the pole that can't do shit. I know that's right. Bitch, you got all that ass and you can't do nothing with it. That's what she said. It ain't about how big your ass is. It's what you can do with it. I know that's right. So anyways, uh, when Corbin, who came, who know, who came in? What's his name? It's his name, DL, Big L. Big L talking about, hey boss. And, um, and, uh, Autumn and uh, Uncle Clifford turn around talking about, huh? And Clifford said, ooh. <laughs> I don't like Clifford in the corsets. I don't like them. I need the corsets to be a little bit more fitting because it just looks like a box around him, like a bejeweled box with some strings hanging. I don't like it. It doesn't fit right to me. I need them to be more fitting. I think for if you're going to put a corset on a body shape like Uncle Clifford's, I feel like the material needs to be different. I feel like the material should look like, like the way that it's structured should look like a corset or a bustier or whatever, but the material, you shouldn't use all that boning in, in that it should be more flexible to fit around their body. I didn't like it. There were several times Uncle Clifford had on a corset. I was like, no, because it was just like, it looked like he was in a tub. You know, um, you know, when, um, where they have, like, they put those barrels and it'd be like a barrel strap with straps and it'd be a barrel, a person sitting in a barrel. That's what Uncle Clifford was looking like to me in those corsets. I did not like those corsets at all, at all. I was like, no, throw them away, all of them. Unless you're going to make, like I said, unless you're going to make a corset, you, you, um, people and seamstresses and clothing designers you, you understand what i'm saying like you don't put something that stiff on a body that's that stiff right because it's supposed to be a the corset is supposed to be a form fitting so when you wear it under clothes your body is smooth so if you're going to wear it outside of your clothes it shouldn't look bulky 
and barely. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Corbin shows up. Um, he says that the rules have switched up. Um, they really, they really want the pink. They really want the pink. And Uncle Clifford's like, well, thank God for dead. What do he say? Thank God for dead something. Dead uncles, dead dead mayors, or something like that. Because the rules have changed, and so now they're going to have to vote on what's going to happen to the pink or whatever. Keyshawn sees a text on her boyfriend's phone that says he didn't get the managerial position. Uh, outside, they, um, her boyfriend is talking to Sheriff Bailey, who basically says, I can't charge him because if I charge Diamond, I'm going to have to charge you because y'all, you know, I'm going to have to charge you. So just, just leave, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. I love that the sheriff referred to Uncle Clifford as she with the respecting of the pronouns. I appreciate that. I really, really appreciate that. The sheriff asked Keyshawn, did she happen to know Autumn's real name? And she was like, no, you never know a stripper's real name unless they tell you. He was like, okay. Mercedes, she was practicing on a brass pole and they're installing some chrome poles that are supposed to be less flimsy um, and less flimsy. And it was something else that they said. Um, When she was practicing, you could tell, you know, she's having some pain in her shoulder. Roulette was like, you want me to get you some of that green alcohol? (laughs) I was like, green alcohol, no. She was like, did she try to call me an old lady? Yes. <laughs> yes, she did. You talking about Massa Autumn? Yeah, the devil The devil was an angel before. They talking about Autumn, Massa Autumn. Anyway, no more auction, crack a vote. What, 10 million? Oh, they want to give them a half a million for the pink, I think. And then Autumn was like, no, I want, fi- I want 10 million. And that's when he said, thank God for... Um, dead somebody and she said thank god for dead mayors um what happened not ready to open i might as well put ernestine on the mic (laughs) you need to follow my lead mercedes was mad too because she said um the the re 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 opening is happening the re 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 opening is happening on clifford's birthday and they're upset because I guess that's supposed to, you're not supposed, they're not ready or whatever. And we see a commercial where the blessings reside, where the blessings reside. When I tell you I would burn that damn church down if I was a Mercedes. <laughs> I'm burning the church down and I'm shooting everybody running out. Okay. <laughs> Bitch, I'm tired of y'all. I am tired of y'all. So Clifford is up there with Ernestine and they're having a conversation. They're talking about, you know, different things or whatever. The doorbell. Was it the doorbell? It was a knock at the door. It was a knock at the door. They were fussing about how they ain't had dick. Clifford said she ain't had dick in in five months. And Ernestine said she had ain't had dick in 15 years, right? And so that's when the door, the night there was a knock on the door. It was a little murder. Little murder. He was like, Oh, so good to see. She's like, What smell like smoke? That's what she said. It smell like sus. smoke out, out here. He was like, Hi, Miss uh, Miss Ernestine. Is that what he said? She was like, Little murder. She was so happy to see him. Well, barely. <laughs> so as little murder is standing there talking to Ernestine, you could see. Clifford in the reflection. She had came and snuck behind the door and was listening, right? And Little Murder was explaining, basically saying that he handled the situation wrong. He should have done better. He didn't handle the situation the right way. Um, and could you leave leave her a message and tell her that um, I'm getting ready to go on tour, but I just didn't handle the situation in the right way. And then um, when Little Murder left, Ernestine said, you talk about missing dick. Amazon just delivered a package to your door. <laughs> but Little Murder saw Clifford in the reflection. So, and it was cute the way he hit the door. Like, I know you sit, I know you stand in there. But I don't think Clifford saw murder, that saw that murder saw her standing there. Okay. Andre. I remember his name now. Andre. Um, He tells his wife that he has to stay until they read the will because he was named as the executor. He sees hoses as he's walking through the town. He sees all uh, like this contraption in the middle of the street that has hoses 
you know, going to all these different houses or whatever. So apparently the mayor was when the people were not able to pay their bill or whatever, he was paying the bill. And I think it was something like a $10,000 water bill. He called him Robin Hood. He puts in that VHS tape finally, and he sees this old, you know, this old tape of him and the mayor and him telling him he could be anything he wants and somebody in the background telling him he couldn't be the president or something like that. And he was like, you could be anything he wants. So he's sitting there like shaking his head, like talking to his younger self. And he's like, like shaking his head, like I could be anything I want. Um, Keyshawn, she walks into her room and to the baby's room and her boyfriend is sitting there with all the diapers that she had stuffed in the diaper genie. And he was like, you lied to me. You went to the di- the dollar store to see Diamond. Uh, you Last Thursday at 1224. I said, this mother is crazy. And I was reading online that what happened during the pandemic was a lot of people who were in abusive relationships had to be stuck with their abuser children and men and women who were stuck in the home with their abuser and how the rates uh the calls went up you know people calling for you know more domestic violence incidents and things like that um so they wanted to touch on that with this story a lot of people i don't know why people are upset that they're talking about the panorama when another article I read was like, you know, dancers and strippers and even sex workers were not able to work. They lost a lot of money during that time because the men that their customers weren't able to leave the house, not Martel, honey, he was leaving the house anyway, but they were not able to leave the house. So it affected everybody's pocket. And and the fact that people are upset that, that they keep mentioning the panorama it's supposed to reflect what's happening i know it's like it can't be so fantastical that we just ignore what why they've been gone for two years i think it incorporating the panorama is perfect because it fits everything the dancers not having access the domestic violence issues that really was happening so I thought I think it's good that they're doing that anyway so he gets upset he was like you went at 12 24 last Thursday you went to see Diamond she was like no 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 I just wanted to get out of the house to get some moon pies she was like well he was like did you talk to him he was like don't lie to me don't lie to me he's yelling at her with the baby she has a baby in her hand too the baby's looking like damn come on good little actor baby I know that I I don't like to scream in front of babies can you imagine he had to like yell like that and that little baby was probably like wait a minute (laughs) what's happening y'all was just feeding me before the scene now this white man is hollering at me (laughs) good baby was like what she was like, I just was talking. I mean, he was yelling at people. He was yelling at people, putting that he yelled at me. He yelled at you. So he called up to the dollar store and he was like complaining about him. And they were saying, yeah, we got some complaints. He's yelling in the phone. Well, he needs to be fired. He doesn't need to be yelling. He yelled at my woman and all this other stuff. Then she like, she was like, yeah, that's crazy. Because he was saying something like you called him a gutter nigga or something like that you wouldn't do that. Like you could tell she was already switching, right? She was already getting her power back, you know, because you could tell just in the way that she was talking. She's such a good actress. You could tell just the way she was talking. And then he was like, no, baby, you know, I wouldn't do that, this and that or whatever. And then he was like, she was like, well, I need to go on tour or something like that. And he was like, no, you don't need to be out. You need to be here. She was like, no, 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 no. We need to get our house. I need to be able to finally achieve my dream. We need to have everything that we want. And going on this tour is really going to help us out. He was like, okay, well, let me, let's talk to the manager, her manager. It was, she was, he was like, she was like, okay. So little murder calls, ne- DJ never scared. And he says, you know, you know, you're going to be ready. You're going to be ready. He was like, nah, man, I don't, I think he said he was in Atlanta. Did he say he was in Atlanta? He was like, nah, I'm in the studio. Some, and then you see somebody put their hand, like a woman's hand with these nails and you hear Meg, Meg's voice, uh, play that, play that beat for a real bitch. I was like, okay, Meg, the stallion anyway. So, 
Um, they're in this hearse, honey, a gold hearse child running down the street and they stop and he was like, like they stop and get some guy out of jail. When little murder hugged this dude, he looked like, oh fuck, like, why are we bringing this nigga with us? Right. He looked like nervous, right? He hugged him. I don't know who this guy is anyway. So the manager is over there, right? So the manager is talking to Keyshawn and her boyfriend and he's explaining about, you know, what's going to happen when they go on tour. So Keyshawn tries to make it seem like it's not worth going. Like I, like the deal needs to be better, right? The deal needs to be better or else I'm not going. And then he gets all mad. He's what he walks outside. He sits in the car and he was like, she's talking about, it might not be worth it. I'm not giving her what I'm supposed to be giving her. And the dude was like, are you? He was like, man. And then he gets a text and she, and he, and she says, thanks. I'll do the rest. So I don't know if it was like, make it seem like it's not worth my while. I'll make it seem like I want more. And then you make it seem like you're able to give me more and then I can go, I can leave. I can get the fuck up out of here. That's what I got. Y'all let me know what you think about it. So at the pink, um, Whisper is holding a pendulum trying to tell somebody if they the baby daddy or not. And they hollering and screaming and all this other stuff because they upset. Clifford's going through IG. Um... Ernestine tells her to take the trash out. When she goes out there to take the trash out, she gets kidnapped by four people with scream, the ghost scream mask on. They stuff her in the trunk. Baby, when they got her out of the trunk, she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I robbed the bank with L that time. I cut up that body and dropped him into such and such and this and that. And then when they took off the mask, um, there was a surprise party. It looked like a strip club roller rink. I was like, this is fly as hell. This is a fly as hell. So everybody was skating around and everybody was skating. So Uncle Clifford sees somebody that looks like little, little murder. And he looks at him and he does like that. And, um, he turns and then he, he um goes around the rink and uncle clifford's just looking like looking so then uncle clifford gets up and goes to rent some skates so when he goes to rent when he gets gets to the skates um that person looked like little murder that's what when i looked at the credits it was like little murder look alike um Uncle Clifford goes and gets some skates, goes and gets some skates and was like, what size do you weigh? She was like a 13 and a half. Come on, 13, big foot heifer. He was like, okay, 13. He and they end up going in the back and Uncle Clifford gets a, give me some head. I was getting some head, getting some head. I was getting some head, but it was cute when, oh, did we get to that part yet? No, we didn't get to that part yet. So anyways, um, they're in another room and they see that pole, the pole swinging. And then, you know, they were looking like, um, it's like a pendulum now Then we can ask it questions. Right. So the pole was swinging and roulette asked, am I going to make a lot of money tonight? And then she's like, and then, uh, whisper goes, it says yes. And then there was about to ask it. And then, and then, um, she told, um, Mercedes to ask a question. And right when Mercedes was about to ask a question, Autumn comes in and was like, I need you guys out here or something like that. So I was getting some head. I was getting some head. So Darrell was on there too, where the money reside. Darrell was on there and they had a good time. Uncle Clifford had a good birthday party and all this other stuff. So they were out there dancing to 7-Eleven. Shout out to Beyonce for letting them clear the, clear the damn record, honey. Um, they said they tried to do it for the first season and it was too much when they were trying to get Beyonce to clear a record for the first season. So that this season they was able to afford, honey. They was able to afford it. So they was um, dancing to 7-Eleven. I was like, yes, it was going off. I just don't, for me, I'm not, I don't particularly like the strippers who are rough and aggressive. I don't like it at all. I love a, like the way that Autumn was dancing on a pole. I love that. I love a slow, I don't like that. 
aggressive, pounding, falling down on the thing and falling down and doing the splits and all this aggression. I don't like it at all. I don't like it. I'd be like, them girls, they bodies. Ooh, they acrobats. Do you hear me? Athletics. I think it was an April Fool's joke that said that um, pole dancing was going to be in the Olympics or twerking was going to be in the Olympics. I think that was an April Fool's joke. I don't remember. Anyway, but yeah, I don't like that aggressive sliding and falling and sliding and slamming and all that other stuff. I love a, a nice wind up and a twirl around and go up and then spin around. I love a, like a burlesque type of vibe. I just, I don't like all that aggression. I don't like it. The people love it. I don't like it. Um, they're dancing. They're doing their thing. Mercedes sees roulette and whisper doing their thing. Uh, the niggas is throwing money. They throwing and throwing. And she's like, you know, she's used to be in the center of attention. So she's like, I'm about to climb up this pole. Autumn's looking at her like, girl, if you don't get your ass down. Now, remember, her shoulder is messed up. So she's climbing up the pole. She ends up falling. I am so glad they didn't show her falling because that was I was get, getting anxiety as she was climbing. I was like, why is she doing that? She ends up falling down off the pole. She wakes up on this table and she sees Diamond standing over her. Diamond proceeds to find the energy that is trapped in her and moves it till it comes out of her shoulder. He's snapping it. She's moving up everything. I was really shocked at the amount of people who did not know what he was doing. Black people. I was just like, even if you're not a practitioner, you didn't know what he was doing? I, I just thought that was strange. I was like, what? Y'all cannot be that far removed from your roots that you didn't know that he was moving energy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, like, like I said, even if you don't practice, you, you should, it was, I don't know. For me, it was just clear what, I mean, it was clear what he was doing. Anyway. He got the he got the energy up out of her. He said it weighs seven pounds. He laid it on the scale, and I thought it was. I like the way that they opened the window and allowed the energy to go out of the window, and the scale was, you know, um, getting lesser and lesser, getting lighter and lighter. Um, after he does, after he he gets the energy, he says that it is um, energy that is seven pounds, and she was like, "That's really specific," and he was like, "Yeah, that's about the weight that it takes." to pull a trigger and she was like see it's all because of you it's all because of you and then when they were doing that autumn notices montavious's ring and she was like you need to get that ring we don't need to have any evidence he was like i'm not about to have that man's hag on me i need that so we can keep him where the fuck he's supposed to be but we see that montavious is in that room where that pendulum where that pole was swinging like that I felt like when that pole was swinging like that and Whisper looked up at the pole and then looked up at Mercedes that she knew that she was going to hurt herself. I felt like she knew that she was going to hurt herself. Anyways, so he got the um he got the the energy out of her. She was holding on to energy. That's a, a statement for people. You can hold on to other people's energy. And have it trapped in your body to where it's hurting you and harming you. Okay, that was that was just a reminder. Um, <clears throat> Keyshawn's boyfriend tells her she, <laughs> he didn't get the job. She already knew. She was like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Baby, she's on her way out of there. Um, she ends up having sex with him so that she can leave. And he says yes. I almost killed a man for you. You need to trust me. I don't want nobody but you, this and that. So she gets up on, on the pony, rides a few, performs with some little... She, I mean, you really don't have to perform too much sex magic with these niggas. All, the, the pussy is magic enough. Sit on the dick and they'll say yes. Okay? Um, and so she gets a chance to leave. Um, she gets out. She gets in the car with murder and that weird-ass dude that they picked up from jail. I didn't feel comfortable with her sitting amongst them, but I feel like murder will protect her, hopefully. <sighs> Anyways, so they get ready to go. They're going on their 12, 12 night, 12, um, 12 city tour. Autumn, she's in the um, club. 
she's closing down. She walks into the bar. She gets a drink as she's walking away. On the security monitors, you see like a glitch, and then you see Montavious' spirit inside of that room with the pendulum. Andre shows up as she's dancing, and he thanks her for telling him to go to the funeral. Um, they start hugging, like I said on Twitter. Whatever the storyline they have going on between Andre and Autumn, I can do without. It doesn't, it's, I don't, I don't know what they're trying to do. It's weird and it doesn't even make sense. Anyways, um, and then we see Keyshawn leaving with the hood niggas. So that's about it. That was a good episode. I thought it was really good. Like, again, I'm, I'm so glad that they are incorporating spirituality, root work, energy work. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Anyways, y'all take care of each other, protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.